Venice, the city of canals, is slowly being swallowed by the water it sits upon. Experts warn that the city is sinking at an alarming pace, with some areas already experiencing frequent flooding. But what lies beneath this sinking reality? And can Venice be rescued from its watery fate? Stay tuned to find out that this isn't just about rising water levels, and which innovative measures the city is taking to preserve its unique charm. Venice, located in northeastern Italy within the Venetian Lagoon, is often hailed as one of the most enchanting cities in the world. Its picturesque canals, charming streets, and historic architecture draw millions of visitors annually. But beneath its beauty lies a troubling reality. Venice is sinking and has been for quite some time. Surrounded by the Adriatic Sea, built on a collection of 118 small islands and separated by 150 canals, Venice's unique location adds to its allure, but also presents significant challenges as it grapples with rising sea levels and subsidence. While Venice may have earned the nickname Floating City due to its unique water-based transportation system, the truth is that it's slowly but steadily sinking into the Adriatic Sea. It is sinking at a rate of about 0.04 to 0.08 inches every year. Doesn't sound like much, right? Over the next 20 years, that adds up to 31 inches relative to sea level. This gradual descent has raised concerns among locals and experts alike about the long-term viability of the city. Some blame nature for Venice's sinking, saying things like the land is settling or the Earth's plates are shifting. Others think humans are speeding up the process by pumping out too much groundwater and putting too much weight on the city with all the tourists. But what's the actual issue? This sinking phenomenon isn't some breaking news flash. Nope, it has been going on for centuries. The city rests on a layer of soft clay and sediment deposited over millennia by rivers like the Po. Over time, the weight of the city itself, coupled with natural geological processes, compacts this sediment, causing Venice to sink slowly. Experts estimate the city has subsided by about 8 inches in the last millennium, a seemingly small amount but significant when considering Venice's delicate balance. Moreover, Venice was built on a lagoon at sea level, resting on a bunch of huge tree trunks. But even with all that support, it's always been prone to flooding during high tides. Back in the day, though, those floods were more of a rare occurrence. But that is still not the complete issue. The real problem started when people began digging artesian wells to deal with the city's water supply issues. Why? Even before it became a popular destination for sightseers, Venice had opposition. For centuries, its inhabitants relied on wells for their freshwater needs. They began digging artesian wells to address the city's water supply issues. However, this seemingly straightforward solution had an unintended consequence. This means that these wells ended up creating empty spaces underground. Guess what? Venice started sinking into them. Not cool, right? As water was extracted from the ground, the water table, the level at which the ground was saturated with water, also began to drop. This drop in water pressure sped up Venetian sinking even further, reducing the bottom silt's flotation. But wait, there's much more to disclose. We've got the climate change culprit on the scene too. Scientists are pointing fingers at global warming, saying it's causing sea levels to rise. And guess what? With its already precarious situation, Venice is feeling the effects big time. Also, rising sea levels are pushing the Adriatic Sea upwards, putting immense pressure on the city's fragile lagoon defenses. High tides that were once manageable are now becoming frequent, flooding the city's lower-lying areas and threatening iconic landmarks like St. Mark's Square. While climate change and natural processes are major contributors, Human activity has also played a role in Venice's woes. The constant churn of motorboats and gondolas creates waves that erode the foundations of the canals and buildings. Imagine millions of tiny hammers persistently chipping away at the city's edges. The cumulative effect over centuries is undeniable. Now, we can't pinpoint the exact moment when Venice will dip below sea level, but climate experts are looking at the year 2100. That's right. We're talking about potentially seeing Venice disappear beneath the waves in our lifetime. Predicting exactly when this sinking will happen is no easy task. But Venice isn't waiting until 2100 to start feeling the effects of sinking. No, the city gets a little taste of what's to come during the annual Aqua Alta, which usually hits between October and March. Iconic landmarks find themselves knee-deep in water, with churches, businesses, and homes all feeling the splash. 
Now what exactly is Aqua Alta? Super high tides are swooping into the lagoon, spilling over into the canals, and flooding the city streets. When we say high tides, we're talking about water levels reaching 35 inches above normal. Back in 1966, things got really crazy. Venice experienced an unprecedented flood, with water levels soaring to a staggering 76 inches. To put it in perspective, when the water hits the 35-inch mark, St. Mark's Square, you know, that iconic spot in Venice, starts to look more like a swimming pool than a piazza. Now, these floods used to be more of a once-in-a-blue-moon kind of thing. But nowadays, they've become a bit of a regular occurrence. We're talking at least 60 days a year when high tides and flooding are just par for the course. Here's where things get real sad. The salt water creeping into the city isn't just making things soggy. It's wreaking havoc on the buildings, too. The water levels rise above the original damp proofing, making it easier for water to sneak into the masonry. And let's not forget about the poor people living in those ground floor apartments. They're finding their homes less and less habitable as the water seeps in. Now, Venice is sinking, no doubt, but it's not going to give up without a fight. A huge project called MOSE, Modulo Sperimentale Elettromeccanico, is currently being carried out. For this big project, huge inflatable barriers will be built at the Lido Inlet, the entrance to the Venetian Lagoon from the Adriatic Sea. We're talking 78 gates, each 787 inches wide, strategically placed to create a protective shield against flooding. Now these barriers aren't just sitting there looking pretty. They stay submerged most of the time, waiting for the water level to hit 43 inches above normal. That's when they spring into action, rising up to keep the floodwaters at bay. Mose is a technology marvel that shows how creative people can be. Its purpose is to protect Venice's future. However, the project has been criticized for how badly it will affect the environment and how much it will cost. Sure, the project might buy Venice some time, maybe even a hundred years or so, but all that opening and closing of the barriers? It's not exactly great for the lagoon's ecosystem. In fact, some folks worry it could do more harm than good in the long run. And to tell you something interesting, the Mose project has been in the works since 2003 and is still unfinished. The latest word on the street is that it should be up and running by the end of 2024. Fingers crossed. Mose is a crucial element, but it's not the only solution. Venice is implementing a multi-pronged approach to combat its sinking fate. Sustainable practices like limiting water extraction and promoting responsible tourism with smaller electric boats aim to minimize the city's ecological footprint. That's what Venice is doing to protect the city from sinking. But what measures is Houston taking as it faces similar sinking challenges? Watch the video on our channel to learn more.